I'm tempted to ask you another silly question, which is Oscar Wilde had once said that we are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. When you look at the stars as a professor of astronomy or as a curious farm boy, what do you see? What are some of the thoughts that come into your mind? What are some of the biggest mysteries of the universe when you look up at the sky above? Well, it's remarkable that in astronomy, you can actually see what the astronomers are talking about. You know, in particle physics, uh, right now, uh, we are discussing particles that we can't really see. There are elementary particles that are, uh, you know, only produced in accelerators when we smash particles at uh, extreme energies. But in astronomy, you just look up yeah. and uh, <laughs> you see the Milky Way galaxy and you see all these stars out there. And when I go out uh, to the street at night and see the stars, what I think about is that they look like the lights of, uh, in the cabins of a, a ship, a giant ship that uh, moves through space because the Milky Way is moving through cosmic space. Mm -hmm. And uh, I often wonder if there are any other passengers <laughs> next to these lights in those cabins, you know? And that's a fundamental question. And of course, many people prefer to argue we are unique and special, that there is nothing like us. Uh, and that started from saying that we are at the center of the universe, that we are at the physical center. Uh, very wise people, smart people like Aristotle uh, argued that. And for a thousand years, people believed him. And uh, until Nicolaus Copernicus was born uh, 550 years ago, and he realized that we are not at the center, the physical center. So actually, in a week, I'm going to Poland, uh, where Nicolaus Copernicus lived uh, in the town of uh, uh, Torun. Uh, I was invited by the Polish government uh, because they are celebrating 550 years uh, since the birth of uh, Copernicus. And in fact, he was born one week uh, before my birthday. <laughs> and uh, uh, they asked me to give a keynote speech uh, about he, um, what I work on. And uh, I titled my lecture, The Next Copernican Revolution, because a lot of my colleagues still believe that we are at the intellectual center of uh, the universe. In fact, even Elon Musk a month ago was arguing when giving the 2024 Starship uh, uh, forecast, yeah. He said that um, we have responsibility because we might be alone. He didn't see evidence for aliens. Therefore, we have to go to Mars and uh, settle there so that we will not be vulnerable to a single point catastrophe here on Earth. Yeah. And I say that is very arrogant to claim that we are the only ones in the entire universe because, you know, um, here is a simple uh, argument that Elon Musk uh, put a dummy payload back in 2018 on the heavy falcon yeah and that was his car yeah. the <laughs> tesla roadster and he launched it into an elliptic orbit around the sun and it's still in that orbit we can't see it with any of our telescopes but i argue that since the big bang over the past 13.8 billion years surely there has been more accomplished entrepreneurs than elon musk out there and they may have launched debris into space and um, perhaps there are many such cars passing through interstellar space now if astronomers were to see one of these they would say it looks to us like a rock of a type that we've never seen before um, <laughs> and that's what they argue about some of the objects we'll talk about and um, i say well you have to search in order to gain new knowledge you can't just off the cuff say, I haven't seen anything because we had to invest $10 billion in the Large Hadron Collider at CERN to find, to discover the Higgs boson. Uh, we, didn't, we couldn't say, I don't see the Higgs boson, maybe it doesn't exist. That's not a good argument in science. Then we had to invest $10 billion in the Webb telescope in order to find the first galaxies uh, in the universe that I worked on for a, a few decades um, and uh, uh, in order to find gravitational waves, we had to invest almost a billion dollars in uh, LIGO. So uh, new knowledge does not fall into our lap. We really have to invest effort. And when people say uh, extraordinary uh, claims require extraordinary evidence, they are not really seeking the evidence. 
when Enrico Fermi said, where is everybody? That was very pretentious. He was sitting at lunch in Los Alamos expecting aliens to sit next to him. But space is so vast. Time is measured in billions of years. Why would they come and visit him at Los Alamos when he's asking this question? You need to use telescopes. I mean, you can always stay at home and look around and say, I don't have any partner. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, to find a partner, we all know that at the very least, you need to look through your windows and you better use a, a telescope or you go out to dating sites. <laughs> uh, so I have an issue with those people who are not seeking the evidence. And my point is that extraordinary evidence requires extraordinary funding. funding. Yeah. 